Hello and welcome back to the most viewed youth television show on TV today, I believe, which is the West Garfield Park Youth Council, which is sponsored by Fathers Who Care. Once again, we're back and we have another live interactive television broadcast for you today, this evening. I have one of the most powerful guests with me this evening, I would say so, this upcoming season that we have. Uh, I've been with this uh, gentleman for almost six years and he has been very influential in impacting the lives of young people and doing the work in the community to empower not only fathers with his organization Fathers Who Care but impacting the lives of young people and we're gonna chop it up with him this evening so I want you all to sit back relax have those questions ready and please call in and entertain our guests this evening Good evening, everyone. My name is David Elam, and I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council, which is sponsored by Fathers Who Care. Fathers Who Care is a not-for-profit organization on the west side of Chicago in the West Garfield Park community. Once again, my name is David Elam, and I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. The West Garfield Park Youth Council is comprised of 30 youth, which has increasingly grown since our last season, mm -hmm. whose main focus in the community is community involvement and learning how to fix the ills in the community to better service our community, to be nonviolent citizens in our neighborhoods. And we invite people to please call in with your comments and questions at 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738-1060. You're watching a live interactive television broadcast brought to you today by Can TV Channel 21. During the next 25 minutes, we're going to discuss the topic of community empowerment. This is one of our flyers for the West Garfield Park Youth Council. If you need to know how to get involved, you can come to the West Garfield Park Youth Council. We meet every Monday at 4540 West Washington Boulevard from 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. You can contact us at 773-287-5821 or visit our website at www.fatherswhocare.org. A few things that we do over at the West Garfield Park Youth Council, a couple of topics are that we prevent all forms of substance abuse, school and gang violence, anti-bullying and cyberbullying, teen dating awareness, avoid being a victim of peer pressure, conflict resolution, that's a big one, youth empowering our community, how to promote a safe and drug-free community, also mentoring our future leaders. Well everyone, I notice you all see my guest to the right of me, so I'm going to give him the opportunity now to introduce himself and tell you who he is and what he does. Uh, well, <clears throat> well, thank you, David, uh, and the rest of the team. I see you guys are looking mighty sharp, mighty, mighty, mighty sharp. I mean, young people on the move, making a difference. Of course, I want to thank uh, uh, Can TV, uh, Amari, Mike, Stephanie, and of course, uh, who is that? Kiana, and we got the West of the young folks in there, Shania, one and two. We got all of them young folks, AJ, and who is that? All of all of young folks that I don't know by name right yeah. right off, and, and and those who I do know by name, but mm -hmm. I, I mean the whole group, the whole West Garfield Park mm -hmm. Youth Council, for being actively involved in the production of this show. Uh, but thank you so much, David, for for the commitment that mm -hmm. you have with uh, being involved with these young people. I think it's extremely important that you young people stay actively involved mm -hmm. in making a difference in the community, because I strongly believe if it is to be, it must begin with. You all, yes. You all have to take a stand. Uh, unfortunately, so many people just don't quite get it. Mm -hmm. But for the purpose of moving forward, I introduce myself. Of course, I am Reverend Jones, Walter Jones, the Executive Director of Fathers Who Care. I like to consider myself a, a servant for social change. Mm -hmm. I believe the work that we're doing is extremely important work that we're doing, and I think that I would like to challenge all of you men out there to step up to the plate and be more actively involved in the lives of some of these younger men. Mm -hmm. And I challenge some of you sisters out there to be actively involved in some of the lives of some of these young ladies. These young people can't be what they can't see. 
And if we really, really want these young people to maximize their options, then we got to give them something worth maximizing their lives for. We just can't keep running around showing them this and showing them that and showing them no integrity and no values and no morals and no norms and then expect them to be differently. I'm saying to those women and men that are out here that are watching the show tonight, let's make a new. Let's, let's quit doing the same thing and expecting the change. Let's invest in our young people. Let's respect our young people. Let's do what we we have to do to empower our young folks if we really want to make these young folks uh, uh, if we want to bring safety and peace and love and all that good stuff to the neighborhood let's promote the safe and drug free community let's mentor our young people let's provide some interventions some support and let these young folks know that they're not alone that's just mm -hmm. my thought Dave okay I think I thank you for that and I totally agree and I do want to commend you not only for me but speaking as um, your mentee for the past six years that you have been extremely influential in the lives of young people and you're doing a marvelous job and a marvelous work and it's good that you have a continuous effort in doing so and I just want to let you know that as well. Uh, well you know my job I, I'm, I'm not confused on what my calling is. Mm -hmm. I'm not, conf I'm not confused on what my purpose for existing is. Uh, my job is to empower the least of them, to, to step up these young people so that these young folks can stand on these shoulders of mine, but to also to empower, to enlighten, and to engage young people to be the very best that they can be. I am totally committed and totally aware mm -hmm. what my calling and my purpose in life is. I'm just trying to get other people mm -hmm. to understand their purpose in life and to understand that you can't take none of this with you. That you, the whole purpose of this life is to empower somebody else, to pull into somebody else, to share some nuggets with somebody else, to, to extend that olive branch to someone else so they can take it to the next level, like I've been doing with you for years, all right? Mm -hmm. It's your job to do it to some of the younger ones, all right? Trust me, the more you do it, the stronger you get. Believe me, mm -hmm. the less you do it, the less strong you get. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, my name is David Elam, and I'm the President Emeritus of the West Garfield Park Youth Council. And my guest this evening is Mr. Reverend Walter Jones. And the topic this evening that we'll be discussing is community empowerment. And I have some a few questions that I want to ask you. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. First question is, why do you feel that it's important to be involved in your community? Well, listen... <clears throat> It is your community, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you really want the best in your community, somebody got to do it, right? Right. So if you're in the community and you want the best of your community, and if it is to be, it must begin with me, mm -hmm. then that means that you got to take a stand to create some change or some social environmental changes in your neighborhood that's going to bring about some peace and harmony. I believe even if we want uh, the violence to stop in our neighborhood, wanting it to stop and being actively involved and in making it stop is two different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want violence to stop. I want to save some lives. I want to empower some people. However, I'm wise enough to also know that I got to go out there and do some rallying and do some marching and do some mm -hmm. prayer vigils because some folk just don't believe in what I believe in. So I got to go out there and be a beacon of light, I have to be the light in the dark place. I got to speak truth to falsehood. I got to be the salt in the earth. You asking the wrong guy why you need to be involved. Why wouldn't you be involved, all right? Why wouldn't you want to be involved in what's going on in the neighborhood? Why you keep talking about somebody going to come in your neighborhood and with a magic wand just all of a sudden uh, uh, diminish all of the ills in the community that took all these years? We created a lot of those ills in the community, and it's our job to go back into those communities and empower our babies and, and protect our sisters and make sure that all of our community people in our community, particularly our seniors, can live in a, a peaceful, healthy environment. I just believe it. You almost got me started. <laughs> hey, why'd you stop? It's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's the job. you know, you almost got me started. It's, it's the job. It's the job to let the people know why it's important for you to be involved in that. Community. Well, if you're gonna give me that opportunity, I feel compelled. Uh, I, I, my life, my life calling. Mm -hmm. is to empower you young folks so that you all can go out there and make a change. Mm -hmm. See, I'm kind of a little older now. I'm a little set in my ways. I know what I want to do and how I want to do it. I don't necessarily particularly have to do what people tell me to do. Mm -hmm. I do what I think I feel I want to do. And I think what's, I do what I think is best for my community. Mm -hmm. So I'm already in it. But as you all are young right now, you all have opportunities to 
to grow, to expand, to explore, to set new boundaries, to, to do new things in the community that folks ain't never thought of. And you talk about it every day. So I'm telling you guys, if real change is going to come into our community, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, overnight change, and I'm talking about real significant change, where folks can live out the dream, and where folks can get happy, be happy about where they live and how they live, you guys literally have to go out in that community and speak truth to falsehood. First of all, you got to empower and educate yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that you educate it. You can't be going out there talking about something you don't know what you're talking about. And doing something you don't know what you're doing. So basically so, do your homework. Of course do mm -hmm. your homework. You can't get a passing grade in school unless you do your homework, right? Right. You can't get an A unless you do your homework, right? Right. So how do you figure you're going to change the community if you don't do your homework? Right. You got the point. Yeah, I got, I got, I got your point. It ain't new. It's not. <laughs> okay. Next question. <clears throat> how do you as the person that you are, and the work that you do, and the work that you've been doing, how do you stay involved in your community? Well, I'm a president of my block club. Mm -hmm. I'm actively involved with the alderman's office, the senator's office, the representative's office, the congressman's office, and the law, the, the, uh, the police department, mm -hmm. 11, 15, and 25. I'm mm -hmm. actively involved in all of that stuff. I'm act actually uh, a servant, David, for social change. I'm a servant. All right, for social change. I'm an agent of social change. So I'm actively involved. I don't talk about it. I be about it. I attend the meetings. I'm a part of the meetings. I'm a part of the leadership groups. I'm a part of those out there in the community marching. I'm a, I'm a part of those out there rallying. I'm a part of those who are doing eulogies. I'm a part of anything that's going on in the community to make a difference in the community. I'm not sitting around here talking about what somebody else should do. I'm actively involved in doing it. So that's why I do what I do. So you and, should know. So you should know your community first I know. before being involved. Of course not. How are you gonna know it if you don't get involved? That's how you know your community. The, the, the know it before you get involved. That's I don't know what that means. I mean, no, in I order to know your community, you got to get involved. Right. All right. How are you gonna know the community if you don't get involved? How are you gonna know what, what, what the commander uh, think in the community, the sergeants think in the community, or in the, in the police department? Right. How are you gonna know what the aldermen? Is planning. How do you know what, how many dollars are supposed to be coming into your ward? How are you going to know what the rep is doing in the, in the state? How are you going to know what the senator is doing in the state? How do you know what the Congress is doing on the federal level? How are you going to know what the church is doing? How are you going to know what the people in the community are asking for? How are you going to know any of that stuff if you don't engage people? If you're not meeting with How are you going to know? You're not going to know. So you're going to rely on television. No, you can't do that. Because <laughs> like you said, you have to, you have to be out there. Not just once a day. You have to be out there every day. Every day. Because it just doesn't start from here. It takes an ongoing effort. I agree. To I allow agree. the change to progress. Let me put this. Can you can you can you show this for a minute? Yes. You remember you, <clears throat> you remember this this photo here? Yes. It's kind of hard to see, but you, you remember this photo. This is when some of us with the young people rallied uh, and, and went to Springfield. Yes. We got up at two o'clock that morning. Yes, we did. We got together in two vans. Yep. And we went to Springfield to advocate on behalf of our, uh, the young people, right? Yes, we did. The young people had a chance to meet the legislators. The young people had a chance to speak mm -hmm. on their own behalf. Yep. And they had a chance to tell those elected officials in, in Springfield what they felt was important in Springfield mm -hmm. to empower young folks in the community on the west side. Yes, we did. Literally, we had to travel all the way to Springfield, all right, mm -hmm. to tell people what we felt and then travel back. Yep. And one of the most memorable moments of that entire event was we actually got to go to the assembly floor where the bills were being passed and where the bills were being made. And it it we, was impossible for them not to invite you to the floor. <laughs> you know? not, only, not only did we get invited to the floor, but they stopped everything that they were doing to acknowledge us. Absolutely. It's impossible for y'all to come, for you all to come down there 25, 35, 40 deep. <laughs> and not be acknowledged. I think you may have a caller, yes. David. We have our uh, first call. We're going to entertain a couple of calls. Not a problem at all. That all right? Yes. G good evening. Call uh, on the air uh, with Reverend Walter Jones. Your question or comment, good, please. Good evening, uh, Reverend, and good evening, young man. I, I, my comment is this. To make a point, like, like the good Reverend was talking about, you have to make a point. Well, make this point. Get a bunch of African-American kids, a bunch of Latin kids, Take them downtown, tell them to look at all the construction going up downtown, and not one 
not one construction site is African American or uh, 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 Hispanic. Oh, they'll see, they'll see a, a black guy here, or a, a Mexican here, or, but there's 750 of the of the other persuasion. Did I hear you correctly, sir? When you say make a point, make 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 a point, are you saying like make a difference? Sure. Okay. If you if we take the kids that to the construction site and see how well that the the white people are doing, maybe we want to stay in school. Maybe we want to listen to our family. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But we're not going to get any maybes until that happens. They see it on TV, but you got to go down there. It, cause, you know, you, you want to start crying if you know what's going on. All that construction, 70 cranes, and not one African American and not uh, one Latin. You know, you Thank you so much. You got to show these kids something that, uh, you know, that they can do. And not all of them have to go to college. I agree with you 100%. You heard that? Yep. Young people should be actively, if I'm hearing him correctly, Young people should be actively involved in what's going on in their neighborhood, hands-on. Yep. Young folks should be prepared to go to college, not just try to get through high school, but be geared up and ready to take that next step to college and to matriculate through that, mm -hmm. all right? So that when they come back in the neighborhood, they're mentally prepared mm -hmm. to take on whatever they need to take on because they've been educated. They've been equipped. I'm not saying edu uh, uh, college is for everybody, but education is for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Be it a trade school, be it whatever type of endeavors you need to do, go to further your enlightenment or to your uh, uh, your interest in whatever it is. So I agree with that gentleman 100%. I think you got another one. Next there. caller. Yeah. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Reverend Jones. Your comment or question, please. What is community outreach? What is community outreach? Did we talk about that? Okay, what is community outreach? Okay. <clears throat> community, okay? Yeah. Community outreach, I believe, is the power, uh, uh, is, is the, 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 man, I got stuck. Community outreach is the ability to actively be involved in going out into the community, rallying folks together in the community, organizing folks in the community, taking a stand on righteousness, taking a stand on righteousness sake, taking a stand on uh, against injustices. Mm -hmm. That means doing some. Uh, some rallies. Mm -hmm. I do. We, we said it before. Some prayer vigils. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Sometime you may go out there and do a smoke out with the law enforcement. Maybe you go over there and do a block club party over there on the L.A. You know, maybe you go over to one of these parks, Garfield Columbus mm -hmm. Park, and you do a gospel fest. Community outreach or community empowerment is the ability to go out there and engage, enlighten, and empower the community to take back things. Mm -hmm. To go out there and enlighten the people to know that this is your community. You pay the taxes here, so you should be vested in this community. You should not just let anything happen in your community. P community empowerment is you see some folk on the corner doing some wrong, go out there and don't be talking <clears throat> against the young people. Go Go out there and empower some of these young folks. Mm -hmm. Come here, son. You know, let me tell you something. I know what you're doing out here. All right. Let me tell you what's the outcome of what you're doing. As opposed to want to want to scandalize these young folks. They don't know no better. Mm -hmm. But anyway, call me at the office, 773-287-5821. Or log on to Fathers Who Care at fatherswhocare.org. Or Twitter, Walter Jones. Or Facebook, Walter Jones. Or Fathers Who Care. Just come on, get in touch. Next caller. I have, a, I have a question specifically for Reverend Jones. Yes, sir. Um, how do you make a difference in your community? You know, I, I think I'm getting a pulse of that tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a stand. I, I, I make a difference because I just don't fall for anything. I just, I'm, I'm standing up on what's, what's right. I'm promoting uh, what I think is right. And, and what I think is right is empowering these young folks to remain free from underage drinking. Uh, from substance abuse and senseless violence. I think I make a difference because I'm always engaged in trying to pass this torch to someone else to take it to the next one, to take it to the next mile. I think I'm actively involved is because I'm always engaging young folks and trying to mentor them to be the best that they can be. I'm actively involved because I'm out there promoting a safe community, a healthy community. I'm, I'm, I'm actively involved because I'm actively involved in resolving conflicts between you young folks so they won't result into you hurting him or he hurting you. I'm actively involved because I'm setting the tone and I'm 
providing an atmosphere and a, an, an environment where young folks can come together and feel safe and become empowered. Next caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Reverend Jones. Your comment or question, please. Hello, my name is Alfonso Rags, and I would like to ask who caused the shots in the community? Who caused the shot? The shots. Who caused the shots? Well, I think he might be talking to, to when he's talking about shots <laughs> in my life, God is in charge of it all. All right, God calls the shots in my community. But when it comes down to as far as property and, and, and who's in who's who's more inferential, I think the law enforcement folks call the shots because they got the guns and they set the laws. And they can come out there and they can police the community according to the laws. Mm -hmm. Then I think the parents and the community calls a shot because they have property in the community and they can kind of kind of set the tone of, of, of if they're going to keep their property or let their property go down or if they're going to let their children out or not let their children out or if they're going to be actively involved in planting and grass in the community and not planting grass in the community, being actively involved in churches and social services and other entities. I think those folks call it shots. Now, I don't know none about about these other folks who you might think be calling shots. I don't even know who they might be, but I know there's some folk running around and about who might think that they calling shots mm -hmm. because they may be affiliated with some organizations. And you know, I feel, you know, it is what it is. But if you're really gonna be really about something positive, you wouldn't be tearing down your community, would you? No. You'd be empowering it, would you? Right. People who call shots empower the community, not mm -hmm. tear down. Exactly. Next caller. Hello, caller, you're on the air with Reverend Jones. Your comment or question, please. Hello? Hello? Yes. Hi. I, I just have a, a comment, and my comment is that I just want to tell you, uh, David Elam, that it is so nice seeing you on the show. I always enjoy watching you and listen, listening to you, and I love the fact that you are continuously being up under Reverend Jones and allowing him to mentor you because now you're mentoring youth without probably even realizing that you're doing it. And I just want to say keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you so much for that phone call. Thank you so much. Did you see that sort of mean? Yeah. See how you never know. You never know who's watching you, all right? Mm -hmm. You never know. Next caller. Hello, caller. You're on the air with Reverend Jones. Your comment or question, please. Uh, this is Quan. And I wanted to ask, how can I become a productive member in my community? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I like that. I think he said, how can he become a productive member in this community? Mm -hmm. You are one, all right? Just keep doing the right thing. You're already a productive member in the community because you're talking about it. So now what you just have to do is put your hands to the plow. And mean, that means to be actively involved with people in the community making a difference. Mm -hmm. As long as you associate yourself with people who are making a difference for something right, you're going, to be, you're going to be doing something right. But if you don't do it and you do the other, then you become the other. I suggest to you, young man, that you join a youth council, join some kind of youth moving on, doing some positive stuff in your community. And regardless to what other folks think, there's plenty of time to do a lot of stuff, all right? Do what's right. Have fun while you're doing it. Do something where you can set the tone and make life meaningful. I mean, just like I heard, I think I heard a caller say earlier before, make a difference in life. You know, do something in life that's going to leave some kind of legacy for your children and your children's children. Do something that when people remember your name, they say, he cared about this or he cared about that. Not somebody for somebody to say, ooh, I'm so glad he gone. You know? Yes, that ain't cool. That ain't cool. You wanna make you always wanna make a difference. You wanna be known for something. Right. Because if you if you stand if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Where you get that from? I got that from you. <laughs> Who else? I'm finna say, man, that sounds awful for me. Awful for me. Yeah. 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 Next caller. Carla, you on the air with Reverend Jones. Your comment or question, please. Hey, this time I want to add, do you believe you and adults can come together to empower the community. Ooh, that's deep. I like that. I like that. Yes, dear. Actually, that's my plight. I, I, I'm really believing. I'm believing with all my heart that once folks stop feeling afraid, I'm talking about the grown-ups, the older folks, mm -hmm. when they stop feeling afraid and intimidated by young people, then they would actually listen to the young folks, that they would actually engage the young folks, that they would not be afraid to, to come out and embrace these young people, but to empower these young folks and pour into these young people's lives so these young people can take it to the next level. I really do believe right now that if we bridge the intergenerational gap, 
I believe that we can promote a safe and a healthy and drug free community. But if we don't bridge that intergenerational gap between the adults and the young people, then we doom for destruction. Yeah. Because you can't have change in the community without the young people. Mm -hmm. The young people have to change or won't change in order for change to come about. Mm -hmm. Some of the older folks, I love you all, I love you so dearly, but you all are so set in your ways that sometimes you ain't worth a nickel, all right? Because all the thing you do is point your finger at somebody and talk down to people like ain't nobody in the world made a mistake. Like, 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 like you ain't never made a mistake. I'm just saying to you, everybody have sin that comes short of the glory of God. However, if we want these babies to be the best that they can be, we got to set an example and let them know, girl, look, boy, look, we done been through that too. And that wasn't the end of the world for us. So it ain't the end of the world for you. And so then we're going to pour into their lives. We're not going to ostracize them. We're going to encourage them. We're going to nurture them. We're going to support them. We're going to love them. And we're going to forgive them if they've done anything wrong. So yes, you can. And yes, we must. I agree. Hey, you can see it right here between mm -hmm. you and I. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm from the old school, proud of it, all right? And you're from the, you're from the new school. You're a millennial. Mm -hmm. And so you're proud of that. Mm -hmm. However, you need to try to get to where I'm at. Mm -hmm. You need exactly. to try to get these years under your belt. All right? See, so I got these years under my belt, so now I'm trying to give you the wisdom and the knowledge to take it to the next level. Because I know sooner or later the Lord is going to call me over to Hawaii or Tahiti or back to Africa, and I'm going to chill with the elders. All right? Mm -hmm. So before I have to take my seat, I want to make sure that I empower and put some stuff in somebody's life that's going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I see we have another caller. Caller, you on the air with Reverend Jones. Your comment or question, please. Um, my name is Bruce, and I, was, I just wanted to ask, how do you make a difference in your community? Nick, I said that already. Mm -hmm. I think I said that already. Yeah. Be an example. Be an example in your neighborhood. Be an example in your neighborhood. Be involved in your neighborhood. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, my name is David Elam. I'm the president emeritus for the West Garfield Park Youth Council. My guest this evening is Reverend Walter Jones, and we're discussing the topic on community empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I want to let all parents and youth between the ages, parents, if you have any youth between the ages of 13 to 24 years old, we want to invite them out to come out to the West Garfield Park Youth Council. Come out and see what we're all about. Can, I, can I share something? Go ahead. Look, I want to talk about something that I, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. Currently, we have, we've have we been working with young folks on job readiness, mm -hmm. employability, uh, skills, and trying to put hook them up with all the programs mm -hmm. where we would pay or that we have some folks who would con consider paying them mm -hmm. to train them to learn job readiness mm -hmm. skills, to be self-employed or how mm -hmm. understand job etiquette. Yeah. So if you're interested in, in those type of opportunities for paid training, give us a call at 3 1 287 5821. Call Fathers Who Care if you have some young folks between the ages of 16, 16. to 21. Mm -hmm. who are in school, who's looking to continue their endeavors on job readiness, uh, 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 promoting a safe and drug-free community, uh, career development, etiquette, and possibly receive mm -hmm. stipends and or a few dollars uh, as you learn. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're currently open up the door to try to bring folks in to educate and empower you, the young people, on what you can do, your possibilities in life. Again, the number is 773 287 Five eight two one. We are currently looking for young people between the ages of 16 to 21 who would like to train and learn some things about job readiness, employability skills, and to, how to prevent violence, how to curb violence, and possibly get into a program where you possibly can receive stipends and or some resources for being involved. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Also, the West Garfield Park Youth Council meets every Monday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at 4540 West Washington Boulevard. We want to invite all young people to come out and see what we're all about. Get involved. Get into something positive. Be a change. Be a voice in your community. I want to thank that, you, though, David. Get out, of that, get out of that shyness because a lot of us... A lot of us tend to be shy and don't know how to talk to people, but we'll mold you, we'll show you what you need to do, we'll bring you in. You, you was know, once shy. Yes, I was. Because About I six never, years ago. I would never thought I would be sitting here today hosting a television show. I had to learn. I had to get it right. Yeah, well, you was once shy, shy, shy for real. Yes, yes I was. But, but I'm so proud of you, Vernicia, Kiana. 
uh, 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 Shania one and two, and all of them young folks that's a part of the council that you guys are involved in. Mm -hmm. And I think you all can do it. Do it. Make it happen. Make it happen, babies. Make it happen. It's your turn. Make it happen. Yes, and I want to thank uh, you, Reverend Jones, once again for setting aside your your schedule to be a guest on tonight. I love you all, David. On, I love you all very much on tonight's show. But I'm going home after this. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going home after this, I brother, and we, I'm going to relax. I think we all are. But all please, right. Come out and see what the West Garfield Park Youth Council is all about. We meet every Monday from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m., 4540 West Washington Boulevard. For more information on how to get involved with that, please call us at 773-287-5821. Also visit the website, www.fatherswhocare.org. We love you. Peace and love. We'll see you next week.